Hey guys, today we're going to be testing out fluid hot press watercolor paper in their cellulose option. And we're going to be painting this adorable elf girl. I hope you guys are looking forward to it and I'll see you guys in a second. Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a watercolor illustration on a paper I almost never use, a hot press watercolor paper, because a few of you have asked me about the differences between hot press and cold press, and to be quite frank, I actually, I know what they are. Uh, hot press has a smooth finish, cold press has um, that rougher texture, they're sort of, um, the in processes for making them are a bit different. Hot press sort of feels like a plate bristol, for example, and it takes ink line work quite well, but in terms of painting, I'm actually not particularly familiar with hot press watercolor paper. I'd only used it one time and I didn't care for it. So I thought I would give it another shot, and this is one of those two shots. So this is an illustration that I did when testing out the Platinum Carbon Fountain Pen, and I found that it handled quite well on this paper. So if you are looking for um, a nice paper for your fine fountain pens for art purposes, hot press watercolor paper is a good choice. And this is a cellulose based watercolor paper so it may handle the water differently than say a cotton rag watercolor paper which is the other type of hot press that I have to experiment with at another time so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of a background wash and I think I want sort of a striking color so I'm actually going to use a little bit of mission marine blue which is a I mean it is a beautiful beautiful blue and I'm just gonna pop it a little bitty bit over here on the side. Probably could have done it on the daisy palette that I have off camera. Probably should have done it, in fact, on the daisy palette because I am mixing. I'm not going to use it in its concentrated form. Let me actually pull out for you guys just a bit since we're doing a wash. And it is July. I hope you guys are enjoying your summer, whether it's summer break or if you're working through the summer, I hope it is a good summer for you. And uh, it is World Watercolor Month. So all month long, I'm going to be doing additional, in a, I, more than I normally do, watercolor tutorials here and on the blog at natosoup.blogspot.com. And I hope you guys will join me for them. So the first thing I'm gonna do I'm going to try to evenly apply a wash of this beautiful blue onto this hot press paper. And this is um, block bound, which means it is glued on two sides, which will hold it fairly tight, and it means I do not have to pre-stretch my paper. It also means I cannot run it through a printer this way. And I know some of you guys are kind of scratching your heads at that, but if you head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com, I have tutorials for how you can print your blue lines using water-soluble dyes onto your watercolor papers, pencil over that, and then after you stretch it, the blue lines disappear. So if you're doing complicated illustrations, that might be the way to do it. And it's how I do my Kara pages. And if you'd like to take a peek at those, there are a few ways you can do that. I recommend you head on over to 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.tumblr.com. Or if you'd like to read all that is currently available, you can buy volume one by checking out my description below for a link. So I'm trying to blend out her neck a bit. In fact, I'm going to create a thirsty brush by wicking the extra moisture out using a paper towel. And then I'm just going to distribute some of this a little bit better. And I thought I had a roll of paper towels handy. It's always a little disconcerting when you think you have paper towels and then you find out you don't. Ah, I found them. They rolled away from me. So I'm going to use a clean, fresh Viva paper towel just to sop up and do a bit of a fade on this blue. And then we're going to go back in, blend it in a little bit better. 
So I have been warned in advance that cold press does not handle like, or rather hot press doesn't handle like cold press. So this is going to be a learning experience for the both of us. All right, so I'm going to let this dry. All right, guys, while that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing up a skin tone. And we're actually gonna go this time, I think with a lighter skin tone. Um, hmm, maybe still tan, but not quite as dark. That way we'll get a little more variety going on. So I'm going to use maybe a burnt yellow ochre. And steal some of the brown. I know it's cheating that I mixed up from my last tutorial, which was also an elf girl, but on cold press or at least cold press finish watercolor paper. Let's see. Cool to the touch, but not wet, except down here. Cool to the touch usually means that your paper is still damp on the inside. Um, sometimes you can go ahead and paint over it, and sometimes you shouldn't. It really depends on the humidity. So I'm actually going to add the highlight to the eye. I've also been told that hot press is great for gouache. So if you enjoy painting with gouache, which is a type of opaque watercolor, then maybe hot press is the way to go. And what I'm gonna actually do is while I wait for the background to dry, I'm gonna use a diluted version of the background blue to tone the skin and make it look like the piece is sort of a coherent whole. And it seems like hot press is not nearly as blendy as cold press. Which is a little frustrating. I'm very reliant on being able to blend. And we'll go little more saturated and do her hair and her tassel earrings and for most of my watercolor tutorial videos I use the same palette that I demonstrate um, in my watercolor basics blog posts over at natosuit.blogspot.com and you can head over there to read all about it including a great list of recommended convenience colors to help you get painting right away um, but it is mostly Windsor and Newton, Daniel Smith, and some Holbein, as well as some Soho watercolors. All right, so um, I need to step away, I believe, and let that have a chance to dry. All right, guys, this has had a fair amount of time to dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and darken in the background just a little bit since it's almost the same color as what I use to tone her face. So, pick up some more of that marine blue. And it's really nice, vibrant blue-green color. A rather cool-hued blue, I should say. And this time, we're gonna try for a more even dispersal of water since you do get more noticeable brush strokes and marks and pooling effects on the hot press than you do on the cold press. Go ahead and start a blur effect by adding some water in there. And the 
Let's see if we can get that to work. May not perform as well on hot press as it does on cold. And you guys can see that marine blue mm -hmm. is just a beautiful color of blue. Almost done. All right. I think that looks pretty good. And we need to let that dry before we can really work on her skin. But I am going to go ahead and activate some green gold this is Windsor and Newton green gold it does a beautiful shading effect and go ahead and paint in her eye get that started and we'll let this dry Actually, while I think about it, while that green gold is still um, a little bit wet, I'm going to go ahead and use some of that marine blue from the background. I want to dab off the excess. Go ahead and see if we can't get something, some sort of blend with that. All right, like I said earlier, I'm going to go ahead now and let that dry. Mm. All right, guys, so um, our background is mostly dry. It is a little cool to the touch, but not damp. And her eyes look like they have, in fact, I will zoom in for you guys, looks like most of the water has been absorbed. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I'm going to have to mix mm. this darker. I can tell that already. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the first layer on her skin. And I have a feeling I am laying down way too much water that you can't get away with doing this the way you can with cold press papers. But hopefully if I work quickly we won't have a noticeable problem. All right we're gonna pause at the jawline. For, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and pull up any pooled liquid. I think that'll help because it's not soaking in. And then I'm going to go ahead and work on putting some water down to start that fade. All right. And then I don't think we're really going to get a good wet into wet blend with this. But activate some Opera Rose. Go ahead and mix it in the big well of my Daisy palette. Start with that. A little bit on her lips. A little bit underneath her neck and I'm sure some of you guys will be like oh you're handling the cold press all wrong I mean the hot press all wrong and I probably am this is sort of me experimenting with it for World Watercolor Month you're never gonna learn what you can and can't do I mean, you can read about it and you can research but you also have to practice and you know do some field work so I'm going to start mixing her skin tone a little darker. So Venetian red, 
yellow ochre. And we'll leave it at those two for now and give this a chance to dry. All right, so we're gonna go ahead now and add another layer of skin tone. And actually, I think I'm gonna switch over to a smaller brush. When watercoloring, you should use the largest brush you feel comfortable using. And sometimes using too large a brush can actually be a big problem because you can't control it. So that's why when I do watercolor workshops, I always advise most comfortable using rather than the largest brush you can. Because of course, you know, we could try to manhandle a size 20 round, but that might not yield the best results if we're not confident in how we mm -hmm. use the brush. And it's better to practice painting with confidence and push yourself to grow than it is to try and force yourself into something that you're just so uncomfortable with. It ruins the experience. So. We've got our second layer. Going to use a thirsty brush and absorb some of this pooled liquid. And let it dry. I wish it would stay about this color because I really like this color, but watercolor dries lighter than it goes down. So I may have to continue um, darkening the skin tone until I hit exactly what I'm looking for. All right, so this layer is still a little cool to the touch, but it isn't shiny and it isn't damp. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another layer. And I mixed this layer a little darker than the last, trying to build up contrast, trying to build up tone, but we're going to cover less area with this layer than we did in the prior uh, layers. I feel like we've um, established a decent enough base skin tone. Now we're going to use a thirsty brush, try to blend that line out somewhat as well as this one. And again, a reminder, I am using the cellulose-based hot press paper. Rag, cotton rag, water, uh, hot press paper may behave differently. I do have some of that as well. And I will experiment with that in another video. Alright. Looking good so far. Let's let that dry. All right, so our layer has had a chance to dry. It's time to go ahead and apply another. And I mix it a little bit darker with a little bit of Van Dyke Brown in there. Start this time underneath the neck. And I think this time I'm not going to blend it out. I think part of, I'm getting a little bit of muddiness already and I think that's twofold. I think the blue I used to tone her is um, sort of giving it a muddy cast since it is technically a contrasting color to the brown or I guess it would be a split complement. And um, I'm also, I was also blending out and I feel like on hot press blending out is an invitation for muddiness, so I'm going to 
stop doing that. At least for the most part. And also I have a feeling hot press probably works well if you like doing thick um, applications of color, so gouache. It would also take alcohol marker well. It would probably take water-based marker quite well. You know, it can be hard to find good papers for water-based markers. But with the way I handle watercolor, it doesn't handle that so well. All right now, while that dries, gonna go back into our marine blue which is actually still on our craft sheet do a layer of that and let that dry all right guys it's time to start working on her hair and I think I want to go with um, maybe a lighter color. So I'm going to grab some yellow ochre. I'm sorry, I need more than that. And some burnt yellow ochre. And while that activates, I'll just go ahead and get started on the first layer. And then I will soak up any pooled excess. Right now, while that dries, I'm going to go ahead and mix the color so it's more intense. Clean that out, and then go into that upper rose. And get that started as well. All right, so after letting it dry and thinking about it, I'm not actually that happy with the skin tone, so I'm going to try and get it a little bit darker. I think the discrepancy between the light and the dark just is too great and I'd like her overall skin tone to be a little darker than this. So we'll try with another all over layer. See if this can't we can't get it to dry a little bit better. Alright, so I'm going to go back into the hair with the color I mixed up earlier. A little bit darker, not too much darker. And remember a couple of things. One, we are trying to cover less area than we did in the prior layer, so this isn't going to be full coverage. And two, we want to start working in our highlights. Also absorbing some of this extra color so it doesn't pull so much on the paper. That's definitely 
something uh, that hot press has a tendency towards, it seems. I have to walk, work a lot thinner than I normally would. So, going to mix my opera rose a little thicker, a little more saturated. And do another layer of that. Alright, so got a couple of layers on the hair. I'm going to pretty much work directly now with yellow ochre. And even a fairly thick mixture does not it just handles so much differently. Those of you who do enjoy using hot press watercolor paper, let me know in the comments below. And if you have a video demonstrating how you like to use it, let, uh, link me that as well. Or if you have like an online gallery or something. And uh, let me know what I'm doing wrong. Be nice, of course. Be kind, I should say. But let me know. Because I usually use cold press and uh, I have a feeling I'm just not really handling it the way it's probably supposed to be handled. Like I said, I also have some cotton rag. I have some Fluid 100 hot press paper that I need to do an illustration on so we can have something to compare this to. Because maybe this is just the way the cellulose fibers react and maybe cotton rag reacts differently. Go ahead, soak up, redistribute. Then we're gonna do another layer on the lips. And I actually have some purple from the, well, the last watercolor tutorial I recorded. So, I'm going, and I probably should actually work a little darker than this. I'm going to go ahead and at least block that in for her neck. And I'll see if that works. All right, so I guess I'm going to let this dry. See you guys later. All right, guys, so I let this dry overnight. Need to reactivate my pigments, my paints. And I also need to decide on a color for her ear tassels. And I think I might go with a green gold for that. Sort of a peridot color. Yeah, that should be a little bit better at least. So that's another thing is uh, hot press just doesn't show off glazing techniques the way cold press does. So if you like painting thick, it seems like hot press is great. And if you like painting thin and many glazes, then cold press might be the way to go. I 
and I'll use some opera rose on the other jewels and I'll come back and do those after the hair has had a chance to dry Sorry, that was my cat clawing into my hand as he jumped into my lap. Yeah. No regard for other people's safety. So now we're going to fill in her hair jewels. Sort of makes her look like watermelon tourmaline because we've got that green going and we've got the hot pink going. And of course, we're going to leave a border on that. We'll mostly fill that one in because it's the one in sort of in shadow away from the light. And I'm going to switch over to a smaller brush and give this a chance to dry because I'm going to tighten up the hair just a bit more. All right, so that seems mostly dry. I am reactivating the skin tone that was dry yesterday with just a little bit of water. I want this kind of thick. Because a lot of my shadow seems to be getting lost. All right, switching over to a Payne's Gray for the moon charm on her forehead and also for the beads on her tassels. Hopefully those won't bleed out too much. And then activating some sepia on the eyelashes. All right, guys, so I'm going to work on shading these Opera Rose pink jewels now, and I'm going to actually reactivate a red from yesterday's tutorial. So it is cherry red plus naphthol red, now containing some opera rose. Hopefully that will be pink enough, I think so, to make visual sense as the shadow color on these. You could also go with a purple or a mauve. So long as it was kind of a hot purple. So a red-violet might be a good choice. And I'm just doing a little semicircle on the bottom of each of the jewels, except for the last ones. I'm going to color those all in. Then I'm going to go back into that Payne's Gray. That's a little too saturated. Let's see if I can get there. We go. All 
All right, I have also activated a cool influence green straight from my palette, probably ASAP green. And I'm going to use this to add a little bit of shading to these tassels. I don't want to do too much because these tassels are, um, they're really yellow because I used green gold. So I don't want to just sort of completely throw off the color palette. But a cool green is a good choice. So, I think we are nearing our final stages. It's when we pull out our white gouache, which is just an opaque watercolor, for those of you who are not familiar with it. Uh, it can be acrylic based, uh, which would make it permanent, but most of them aren't. And really, whichever you choose to use is your preference. I prefer using the non-acrylic ones. They can be blended out a little bit easier after the fact, but the acrylic, once you put it down, it's going to stay down. And we're going to start adding in highlights with this fairly thin brush. I believe it is a synthetic. It is a Utrecht Red Sable. And this is interesting. It's actually picking up some of the paint that was underneath, which is kind of making for an interesting effect. So I'm not even going to try to fix that. I'm going to let it dry like that. See? If you try to hyper control everything, you won't necessarily get things like that. Which is one of the reasons why I still think traditional mediums have a, an important place in art and in comics because it allows you to make mistakes and discover new things. Whereas digital, you often have the chance to correct a thousand times until it looks exactly the way you want it. But that kind of can encourage you to stay in your comfort zone or to only mimic artists who uh, you know and respect, which is, I mean, you should be uh, mimicking artists you know and respect, but um, you know, it's nice to sort of happen upon things. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. All right. So we are nearing the end. Oh, I picked up some blue in there. Oh well. So I still have the cotton rag hot press to try out before I decide whether or not hot press is for me or not. Um, it would also be nice to do some gouache work on the hot press and see if it handles it any better, but I'm not really a big gouache user. The gouache I have I um, picked up off of a fellow SCAD student like five years ago, and I think most of those tubes are dead now. So um, I am not so sure that I have the gouache capabilities to properly test this. But if you enjoy using hot press, um, I would love to hear from you, especially if you have a link to you using it and maybe even explaining why you enjoy it. I'm not trying to slam it. I don't think it works for the sort of work that I like to do, but I would love to see how other people use it and use it to their benefit. Um, like I said, I still need to test out that um, cotton rag hot press. It may behave differently. This is the cellulose base hot press and it's 140 pounds. So um, I hope you guys found this video helpful, useful, and informative. Um, even if it was just 
what not to do. If you're looking for watercolor tutorials, please do check out my watercolor playlist and head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basic series. You can find links to both in the description below and probably within my cards. If you enjoy my art and you'd like more of it, why don't you check out my comic, 7-Inch Kara. It's available in two ways. One, as a webcomic at 7inchkara.com or 7inchkara.com dot tumblr dot com or two as a print comic and you can find links to all of that in the description below the web comic has the first two chapters up the print comic has four first four chapters up a bonus comic and a concepts section and it's a great way to show some love and support for what I do another way you can show some love and support is to head on over to my patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup and join my art nerd community so thank you guys so much for watching I look forward to seeing what you guys do with hot press watercolor paper. Bye guys!